I'm starting this by opening the Visual Studio code. It's free to use, it's convenient and it can be downloaded here. And by the end of this episode I will have a canvas displayed in the browser with a red ball drawn on it. The code editor I'm using is the VS code. I'm having here this open, but I haven't created any files yet. So that's what I'm gonna do. The first one is an HTML file that I will call index.html. And I put an exclamation mark here and then press tab. Then I got a HTML code thanks to the extension called Emmet that comes with the VS code. And that extension is also useful for HTML tags. If I type H1 here and then press tab, then I have the opening and the closing tags and I can type something in between. I write hello and save the file. And if I want to open it in a browser, then I I would use live server, which is also an extension of the VS code, but if you need it, you have to download it. It's not coming with the VS code in default. So I have already done that. I can click on open with live server and I see the hello here and I can also see that it's running on the local server. And if I change the code here and save the file, then it will be automatically refreshing the page. I don't need to do it myself, which is convenient. So I do recommend you to download the live server extension. Yeah. And then, uh, Another file that I will need is a JavaScript file, which I will call script.js. First, I will use the console.log function, which outputs a message on the console. Now to see the console, I need to open the developer tools in the browser. In the Chrome, it's Ctrl, Shift and I, and I go here to the console. And this is where the message should appear. Now the reason it doesn't is that the JavaScript file is not linked to the HTML. I can do that by using the script tag on the bottom of the HTML file and that will have a source attribute and the value of that will be the name of the JavaScript file script.js and now if I save it and go back to the browser I can see the message here which means that it has been linked to the HTML file successfully. Now, if I want to draw shapes on the browser, then first of all, I need to create a canvas element in the HTML file. And I can use this hash symbol to define an ID for the HTML element. That's also thanks to the Emmet extension. Now I have an HTML element with the ID of canvas. And if I go to the browser, I can't see that, but I can hover over the canvas tag and I can see that the canvas is there. And also I can see where is it located. Now, if I want to make it visible, I will need some styling and I will do that in the head section instead of doing it in a separate file because it's just a few lines. So the first thing I do is creating a border around the canvas. And I also want to uh, I also want to put it in the middle and give it the background color of something yellow i hope it's the yellow no it's the pink oh uh, it's f f f a c c yeah that's what i was going to do and i also want to change the size of the canvas so i set the width to 640 and the height to 480 pixels And now that will be the canvas I'm going to work with. Now the HTML file is done. All the rest of my code will go to the JavaScript file. 
But before I type anything here, I want to go to the MDM Web Docs website that has really useful tutorials about using the canvas in HTML5. And here is the creating the HTML element part, which I have already done. And here is what I need to do in the JavaScript. I need to create a variable. Uh, its value will be the canvas element from the HTML file. And I also need to define the rendering context, which will be 2D. So I copy these two lines and put them in the JavaScript file. And I need constant variables instead of the vars because I'm not going to change the value. And also vars are not used anymore in ES6. And I also need to change the ID. I don't have the tutorial. I only have the canvas ID in the HTML file. So now I'm ready to actually draw on the canvas. And for that, I'm going to move on to the drawing shapes section. First of all, here is a little information about the coordinate space. The zero zero point is on the top left corner of the canvas, and then it's increasing from left to right and from top to bottom. And then keep going down. Here it's talking about the begin path method. Future drawing commands are directed into the path and used to build the path up. And if I'm looking for circle, then I will find the arc method. It needs a few parameters. The X and Y are the coordinates of the point. The arc is centered at and the radius is the size and the start angle and end angle are the drawing angles of the arc if I wanna draw a full circle then the angle will be 360 but here's a note angles in the arc function are measured in radians not degrees so 360 in degrees would be 2 times pi in radians now after spending a bit time on this website I think I'm ready to start drawing a circle. First I use the begin path and then I take the arc method and let's say 100, 120 and for the start angle and end angle I will put 0 and 2 times pi which in JavaScript is 2 times math.py and at the end I use stroke so that I can see the edge of the circle here and I can change the color of that edge by changing the value of the stroke style to another color let's say red now I save it and now the edge is red and there's another function I can use here is the fill which fills the circle with a color. Now it looks like default value is black, but I can change that to fill style and um, yellow. Let's try yellow. Fill style is yellow. Yeah, now it's filled with yellow and the edge is red. Now I want to change this to black and this to red because I think this looks better and now I have one circle but if I want to have another one I would need to copy this whole code and change the attributes like put them to here make them a little bit bigger and turn one to green but this is not what I want to do instead of this I would like to create a function for drawing a ball call it draw ball put all this code here the function will take three arguments the first two are the coordinates of the centrum and the third one is the the radius and I change these numbers also to X Y and R and if I want to draw a ball now, then I call the function here. 
and give the parameters and boom I have the red circle here if I want to have another one instead of copying all those codes I can just call the function again with different parameters and I have now these two circles and this is how I'm drawing circles on the canvas using JavaScript yeah so in the next episode I'm going to introduce the event listeners so that I will be able to reposition those circles using the RO keys.